my edger. I don't like to weedy. Um, so I edge my beds with a tiny little string. Be careful what you do because you will affect your plants. The sidewalk on the side of my driveway, I put a stream down at the crack because I don't want to weedy to keep the grass from coming up. That's my method of edging because I don't like to run a weed eater if I can help. It's just, yes ma'am. I'm sorry. You said that it doesn't stay in the soil. So if you push that on a weed or grass or whatever, you could then, as soon as it dies and you get rid of it, you can immediately plant it. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Not a soil thing. Yes. <coughs> All right. Whew. I'm moving as fast as I can. The um, <laughs> next, what we're going to do now is we're going to talk about three different sprayers and ways of, applica of, of applying some of the stuff that we talked about that are a little bit special from what you might know. Um, the Flowmaster people started back in 1800s. I don't know why, but they said they started in a blacksmith shop. It doesn't make much sense to me. <clears throat> but Mr. Lowell, who had Lowell, Lowell Manufacturing in Lowell, Michigan, um, started a sprayer company. And back then, the sprayer companies, the, the guys went door to door, like the color brush man, and they sold sprayers for pest control or animal, sprayer animals or whatever. They went door to door and sold out of a car, like travel sales. Um, they combined with the root manufacturing company and are now one of the largest sprayers companies in the world. They got a 200,000 square foot facility still located in the same town in Lowell, Michigan. Um, this little sprayer that they have, which has just got adorable to me, um, <laughs> it only holds uh, 1.25 gallons, so it's not heavy. That's become an issue for a lot of people that the sprayers get too heavy when they're full of material. It has fully collapsible or extension in, your, in the wands, so you can do whatever as long as you want it to do. But it's battery operated, so it doesn't have to be pumped up. This particular one runs off of four D cell batteries, which it says will put out approximately 18 gallons of spray. Um, it will run off of rechargeable batteries if you have a way of recharging the D cell batteries. One of the features about it, there are two things. One, it has a reverse on it, which some of y'all know that if you're spraying, especially if you're spraying Roundup, you need to be careful of that last couple of drips that drips off the end of that sprayer doesn't land on your grass or you're going to have a trail where you walk. This one has a reverse in it that pulls the liquid back into the sprayer whenever you finish spraying. So it's just a little, I don't want to spray it running a lot because it needs to have liquid in it. Nice little fill cap. This is the other thing I think. Really cool. I'm really bad to not want to point out sprayers. That tends to be one of my biggest problems. Um, I had it apart last night. Okay. <coughs> the whole lid comes off so you can clean the bucket out instead of, or I like the idea that I can leave my crud in the bucket if I wanna, don't want to use it all up. Take this and put this down and rinse water through it, you know, and clean it out, but then leave this stuff and do it later. You can't really. They don't recommend it. that. Men's sprayers just don't get along. I'm gonna tell you, I bought expensive ones, I bought cheap ones, and for a lot, it took me a long time to figure out why they were not continuing to work, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But it is a battery-operated little sprayer. It's got a nice little hand thing to it, and uh, I know Barbie uses a battery-operated sprayer, don't you? so you don't have to pump it up because if you if you are doing a lot of pumping, it can get kind of. Um, Where's your, where's your shoulder up? Where's your, yeah. Is this sold anywhere local? Uh, look on your, I don't think so. I think I was unable to find it. Okay. All right. Now the next one that we're going to talk about.